separate colored congregation in Washington, D.C. For more than 125 years, it has been located at 1514 15th Street Northwest. Through the years, St. Luke's has achieved distinction in worship. This distinction continues to permit worshipers, no matter how diverse their cultural roots, to live out their baptism and grow in relationship to God. We are faithful to the Anglican Communion and related liturgical traditions. We are a community bound together and identified by our liturgy. We worship according to the Book of Common Prayer, and we emphasize the importance of the Eucharist, of traditions, and of our religious and racial history. Archives are records of enduring value that are permanently saved. These may have been produced by an individual, organization, or institution in the course of activity over time. Many of us worked at Howard University in the library. There was Dorothy Porter, J. Maurice Thomas, um, Ethel Williams, um, Ethel Page, and myself. And we said, you know, we should do something about the church archives. And, oh, yeah, we should. And that's the way it went for a while. And not until the 90s did Mr. Epps push the idea and the investor said, yes, it would be great access. And we started. St. Luke's archives are located on the second floor of the parish hall in Pastor's Hall. Pastor's Hall also showcases portraits of our first seven priests. and is also the daughter of our fifth priest. It's an interesting question to ask how my father's rectorship here and his um, ordained ministry influenced me and whether it had any influence on my coming to serve uh, both as an ordained minister and particularly at St. Luke's Church. Um, I'm struck in, the, in looking at the history of St. Luke's Church of how, thing, how small the world is and the interaction that the, first, the founder of St. Luke's, Alexander Crummel, that after he was ordained, he served in Liberia and then came and ended up as a rector of St. Luke's, the founding rector, and that my father was a rector of St. Luke's 
and after his ministry here, went to Liberia and served as a missionary. And that the influences that we have, his experience here certainly made me comfortable in the church, that I had an opportunity to be here helping out in, in small ways as a child. And, but certainly probably the most important influence was that his ministry here and my mother's involvement here and her ministry here said that something important was happening here. And I was receiving something important and something was happening in this community. History is very important. It is said that those who don't learn history are doomed to repeat it. History, you can't let it go. You've got to keep up with it. And the church is a place where most of the history of the color people are. We can only build on history. The archives building on Pennsylvania Avenue, the inscription over there is, uh, uh, what is past is prologue. We need that. The young people of St. Luke's Church understand the importance of history and are actively looking to the past to gain strength and direction towards the future. I think the first thing that uh, we want young people to do is to recognize that we have collected uh, significant historical information here. And then to look at that and see, you know, what does it represent in terms of the continuing struggle that African Americans face in this country. I mean, we hear lots of times of young people who are confronted with discrimination for the first time in their first job. And what we want to do is to really have them recognize at a much earlier age that this is a significant uh, problem that they're going to have to face and to see examples of how people have had to deal with these kinds of problems in the past and to know that these are people that they really have a connection with because they represent the history and the past of uh, St. Luke's and in some cases uh, the present uh, time frame of St. Luke's. But these young people are then going to have to take that and move on into the future mm -hmm. and make a uh, brighter future for themselves and for all of us. And the church is a place of supposedly of peace and spirituality. And, you know, with so much violence and crime and everything in our streets today, um, the church is one place where I think that we can all come together and learn about our rich heritage right here in St. Luke's. What brings to mind to me in, in, in the history of the heritage here is um, that there, there was a struggle in Alexander Crummel's time, there was a struggle in the periods after that, and even though uh, the struggles today may not be the same, but they are still there. They are still there. And to understand um, that you have uh, I, I want to keep saying rich heritage, but that's not it, that you had such uh, forefathers that brought forth, and it's just continuing to carry on to give you, our young people, the things that they need to overcome those struggles, because they are still out there. One of the things I'd like to see us do is maybe take our information online so that we can be accessed mm -hmm. from all over the world, mm -hmm. um, not just here at St. Luke's, but so that everybody can read about and know about us. Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, I think we really need to preserve what we have in terms of the right um, containers where uh, documents need to be placed, the right tissue, and et cetera. So we're working to move in that direction. But I think that it's very important that as we move towards the 21st century that we actually take our information online so that it can be accessible to everybody. That, to me, would be an ultimate goal in terms of our archive. Archives are the most tangible evidence of history and activities. If you have archival and historical information in your private collection, please consider donating that information to the church's collection.